type of kit. It's an interesting kind of divide and an interesting selection. Jonathan is going to be leading with the Rob here, which does make sense. Mm -hmm. But I can, I'm freely, I can freely think of him switching between characters depending on opportunity and depending on stage as we are leading off with Final Destination here in this set. Absolutely. And we're just waiting for Bakili's. Just look we, at Bakili's. We do be waiting on Bakili's. Look at him. We do be waiting on Bakili's because Bakili's just does Bakili's things. He's warming up. You know, I I am, you know. Oh, there they go. Yeah, yeah, they're, I mean, they are warm. Yeah. They're ready. Headsets are on. Hair is flowing. And the characters are locked. Let's the get right into something. this <laughs> top 16 qualifier. Let's get it rocking. Absolutely. And this is going to be what makes it possible for one of these two players to make it out of, you know, pools. What we're going to see, hopefully, is a nice starting to FD, which I'm a little bit surprised about. You know, I maybe could have just looked at the screen, but why would I ever want to do that? <laughs> but <Fair>. Okay. <laughs> for sure. Okay. We're going to be starting off. Honestly, it's the best policy. <laughs> Not 118% on Jonathan Gaber on losing the stock. What's going on here? The interesting what? part about uh, Rob is that he's, uh, he's big. <laughs> and part of what makes a character so troublesome, uh, part of making what that weakness so troublesome, is that Banjo has very particular combos uh, off of the Briegel Blaster that are hard to hit, but they're significantly less hard to hit on Rob. Of course, Rob has then the trade-off of sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's easy to get mm -hmm. those uh, those bigger extensions and those big combos on Rob. But Rob then also can close out your stocks with a thought of his own. Absolutely. Oh, oh come oh. on. The extensions, that wasn't real, but it was so clean into a quick 60. Absolutely. But responding in kind with 48% on the board, 58, tying it up almost evenly. And we're definitely seeing a little bit of something right now. This is looking like such an even game right now. At first, it was looking a little bit more in Achilles' favor, but is that up air going to do it? Almost it because a very bad DI. Yeah. But whoever knows how to DI Rob up air. Sometimes it can change on you at the very last minute. Uh, Bakilis wasn't ready for that quick change up, but was ready for the recovery. But it looked like they jumped off ledge and ate the seven frame active down air coming out from Jonathan at ledge. Such a uh, very, very keen move to go for. Just like that wow. throw setup again, down throw into up tilt. While again, the up tilt doesn't hit if you don't, uh, if you stay buried, you're also then leaving your susceptible to uh, just an instant up smash from Banjo. Creates a very nasty 50 50. Absolutely, but that was also really nice on Bakilis' end. Just actually taking a little bit of time doing some you know, chip damage while also waiting for the you know, gyro to come down, but that was still really good on their end. Still keeping this very even. But the thing is, we're at 90% right now on Achilles' end, and this is going to be so hard if Achilles wants to keep this game. Getting that throw, putting Jonathan right back off stage, trying to hold center stage right here. And this is definitely still looking like a really even game. I mean, honestly, Rob's still a big boy. Oh. Rob gonna do what Rob gonna do, and Rob is looking like Rob is trying to do a lot right now. Yeah, this ledge trap is going crazy. The spacing for that gyro, forcing a variety recovery route from Bakilis. Uh, and a couple of these means you're burning two Wonder Wings and you're forcing them back on ledge. 160 now, this is an air dodge, but not able to cover it with just the laser. It gives uh, Bakilis an opportunity here, 89%, but uh, 161 rather on the part of, of uh, on their own, but that means max rage and that means a hard hitting bear if they decide to go deep, but just playing it very, very safe, playing it very, very calm at the moment. 203, no Wonder Wings to make it back, has to go for the full recovery route, but intercepted by Jonathan who took the game slow, took the advantage slow, not trying to get any sort of risky business off stage like that and rewarded in turn. I Very mean, well played. Honestly, look at it. Look at that last stock. Can we get a replay on that last stock right there? Because Bakili said, I'm off stage. I'm going to hand you this kill on a silver platter. Because look at how that just I flew mean, so like, well together. Check this out. Wasn't on purpose, but just look at how it happened. Like the, the idea here is great. You can't Wonder Wing from this position. You don't have any. So this is off the table. Mm -hmm. You're forced to recover low, but as soon as Jonathan is able to see that uh, Bakulis is going for a low, a low to high recovery with Banjo's um, mm -hmm. infinite rise, thanks to you, you grab the 
you grab their grenade, you stall until it blows up, and then you can instantly just do it again and again as many times over. Mm -hmm. As soon as they see that, all they have to do, is they don't have to worry about this low recovery anymore. So the angles of which, uh, of which can be recovered here from Bakilis mm -hmm. is instantly just coming to this kind of space. They're going this way. And if they're going this way, that means that's very, very applicable to Rob up there. Don't worry about the art on the screen, because the point is, Jonathan Gamer understood just the angles that they needed to cover, and covered it. Just gaming, I love just that. Just be gaming. <laughs> Jonathan Gamer do be gaming right now. <laughs> this is exactly what gaming looks like. A really nice first game coming in from Jonathan Gamer and just all of these really well-played situations right here. I'm definitely wondering what we're going to see as a counter pick, and what we are seeing as a counter pick is small battlefield. I definitely like it in theory, especially considering how this can benefit Bakilis, but we also need to worry about Rob, because I feel like Jonathan is still kind of getting into that mindset of like, hey, I really need to be careful about how I actually go about these positions that I'm in whenever I'm getting hit. If I'm getting hit too many times, I need to be able to rethink what I'm getting hit from, and it needs to be able to help me in the future. But right now, we're starting still at a very even game right now. 52% to 49 and rising on Bakilis' end. Joshin having a little bit of a small advantage start right here, but definitely needing something. It's an interesting kind of opener that we've seen here from Jonathan, who's able, who was able to make a couple clean reads in order to find an early grab and start things off with a couple strong pokes. But Bakilis is doing what they seem to have been doing best, which is keeping this game in, in a very, very winnable position, even when they're at a huge deficit, but going for the different recovery route and Jonathan, instead of letting them do so like they were before in game one this, and uh, waiting for it around the ledge, rather, they push their advantage just a little bit, open that envelope, and find what is waiting for them, a stock and a stock lead, which they get to snowball into so much more. Holy. Absolutely, and I really want to point out that really nice weight on the platform right there from you know, Jocelyn Gamer, but still in responding in kind, trying to take off this dog. And this is looking like a kill that is going to be a down throw into a fair. Very weird, but that just gonna get sniped. Ha! In the air. I don't, that was, that was kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Taking advantage of Rob's gyro as you need to do in a matchup like this. The Wonder Wing comes out, but when Wonder Wing whiffs, the whiff lag you have is astronomical and plenty of uh, plenty of that to throw out a big forward smash and to keep this stock lead at two stocks to one absolutely and this is still really good at percent lapping Jocelyn gamer in percent and this is still good if we can see this you know percent kind of rise this is definitely what we need to see a really good game in Jocelyn gamer's face i mean what <laughs> and definitely in his favor and oh the but the grenade intercepts the potential jab lock Baku is willing to take the trade and getting the right DI on uh, uh, Rob up there in order to get by that. Still a long way to go and to the point where they're starting to throw out some of these Wonder Wings and starting to throw out some of these options just to see what haymakers are end up going to land here. Absolutely. Look, look at the shutdown platform play on the part of uh, on the part of Josh and the Gamer. Ledge trapping, mixing up between on the platform and super up close and just reacting to how Bakuis ends up uh, circumventing that type of situation. Worried so much about Rob's pokes that they try to play it aggressively coming back on with these big wonder wings and falling victim to the patience yet again from Jonathan Gamer. Also, can we point out that really nice situation right there? Is this where it happened? Just really look at the situation. Use the very nice movement right there. And this is where we get that down tilt, stopping the recovery. And with the Rob down air comes the Rob back air, taking off that first stock at 69% on Josh the Gamer. <laughs> it's a, um, a very premier and a very, uh, very solid kind of orchestra orchestrating of positioning when it comes for Josh and the Gamer. And it's something that Rob just does so well with long range, mid range, and short range options all at his disposal. Mm -hmm. Jonathan was able to basically find a big finisher, or at very least just an opener, at every position by utilizing the big laser to power through all the eggs and the grenade egg, detonate all that, clear the way, find a way into the mid range where you can play around with Rob, uh, Rob Nair, Rob Fair, those kind of buttons, back air as well. 
and then once you're able to get by that range, if you so choose, that's where the down tilts come in, and that's where the big, uh, the big finishers like back air are also able to close out stocks. Just such a good like orchestration of the entirety of the game plan, which leads us away from small battlefield. <laughs> Absolutely, and hopefully this one platform is going to be able to help Achilles find a better way to control a lot of the stage we saw on Small Battlefield just being so hard to play in neutral and getting out of disadvantage in so many times. And hopefully we can see in this game right here a little bit use of it, but that really nice down tilt into the conversion is going to lead into a very nice up smash taking that first stock, and this is exactly what Achilles did not need to be able to make this an even game. And we're definitely seeing that really nice wonder we doing a little bit of something, but not doing enough to take off this stock. And we need to find a really nice F-Smash to be able to take that stock. Still keeping it very even, and hopefully we get to see this very good use of the grenade play on Achilles' end, because this is exactly what they might need to be able to leave with that ladder to be able to put on so much more damage at the percent. And I don't know what that F-Smash was going to do, but that F-Smash was going to do something. So forward smash is actually a really good move from a card with Banjo. Not only is it one of their bigger disjoints, mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, it's active akin to Link forward tilt, where it starts act its its uh, activity starts a little bit behind and a little bit above. So you're able to cover just so much space with one giant arcing swing at the cost of Kazooie's back. But the, I mean, either way, it's still a very very it's 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 a strong button to kind of go for in ledge situations like that. But it also, you do play the risk reward of if you miss, you surrender a lot of that space and you just basically surrender the ledge trap as seen at this very moment. Banjo can recover from this, by the way. Not like that, though. No, no, no. no well, rather, the recovery was correct. The down air was something a little bit harder to play around, coming from straight up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where that's where Rob really wants you to be when it comes to offstage, because that's where Rob Dare thrives. Rob Dare just do Rob things, and... Yep. This is exactly what we're going to see in this position. 53% to 14 and a whole stock lead ahead. This is not looking too good for Achilles. And if Achilles can't do something, this is their last game before they are out of the bracket entirely. Very nice recovery right there, being able to stall it. But that SD, I think they bonked their head and it didn't end too well for them, didn't it? It didn't end too well for him. No, no, it did not. No. The, the just no. slamming into the wall instead of grabbing ledge meant that they had to go for another up B. Uh, it, oh, wait, they couldn't because they used the up B to get there. Yeah, they just didn't have any resources left. Shame. Absolutely. But what isn't a shame is this really good pressure on, you know, Jonathan Gamer just playing really well. But I don't know what else to say other than this was really nice try on Achilles' end. Definitely had something going there. But we can see the lovely robot just try it. Look, look at this. We're going to see this up air. Just wait, just wait, just wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that's big. That's a big button. Seven frames. Seven frame active spike. I think they, the move is active for like 20 frames. But you are you're just got to hold that, unfortunately. It's just it's something to, you have to consistently work around. As, yeah, the up B used high. The up he used to, in order to get high, slamming straight into the wall and falling victim to uh, to their own misjudge of spacing. Ooh. Just gonna get a nice look at that again instead of all the the scribbles and scrambles that's going on in, in our scrimble brimbo matchup. Yeah. It is uh, 3-0 falling in the favor of Josh and the Gamer, who moves on into top 16, which will be playing tomorrow. Uh, at the moment, though, I think the, I think some of the few uh, members that have made it into top 16 are players like Leon. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got Jonathan Numbers. Uh, shout out to House of 3000 running this amazing production. Uh, Dill. Hi guys. Again, House of 3000. There's John. Hi John.